Now we're excited to kick off the evening, and who better to begin than Canada's Prime Minister? Since taking office in 2015, he's been at the forefront of a revolution in Canadian tech. The Prime Minister, in my view, as a European, has helped put Canada firmly on the global tech map. We're excited to have him at the very first collision in Canada. So please welcome to the stage, in conversation with Broadband TV's founder, the incredible Sharzad Rafati, our first speaker, the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Woo! It's great to be here, and it's great to have Collision in Toronto with so Welcome many entrepreneurs. Welcome to Toronto, everyone. <laughs> it's uh, also a truly honor to sit next to our Prime Minister here. I'm very looking forward to our conversation today, and um, as the founder and CEO of Broadband TV, who has uh, built a global uh, leader. Uh, out of Canada, we had our successes and challenges over the last 14 years. And um, I would say one of the uh, biggest challenges that we face, and I'm sure many of the leaders, Canadian leaders, probably would share this with us, is access to talent. And uh, to be able to actually kind of uh, really access high quality talent quickly enough. When you're looking at November, the unemployment rates reached uh, the lowest point, which is great for our economy, but at the same time, obviously it's making it more difficult for us to really access uh, the best talent quickly enough. Um, so I would actually love uh, to hear your thoughts, the Prime Minister, in terms of what are your plans in investing in our local talent and increasing the STEAM seats across universities and colleges so we actually kind of really uh, see greater success across Canada, and not just the tech industry, but as a whole across all industries. Well, there's no question that as the world is changing to being more of a knowledge economy, more tech, more innovative, uh, access to talent is going to be at the core of success for businesses, for economies, for entire countries. And that's why Canada, uh, even though we've been a country that has always had great natural resources and we will continue to, we've always layered onto them innovation and talent on top of it. But that's really come to a head recently as uh, we've determined that the Canadian advantage is in providing extraordinarily well-educated, hard-working, forward-thinking, creative, ambitious uh, Canadians to be part of the global economy. So access to talent obviously uh, comes from immigration and it comes uh, from training up and educating Canadians right. First of all, on immigration, we've seen we're at a time right now where uh, big countries around the world are closing themselves off a little more to immigration at a time where Canada is realizing that we need to stay open, we need to make sure we're drawing in the best and the brightest from all around the world. So one of the things we did was bring in a global skills strategy. So at the same time as the United States, to give a direct contrast, has made it more difficult to bring in global talent uh, into your businesses, into your companies, We've said, well, you know what? If you're bringing in global talent, you're also creating jobs and opportunities for Canadians. So the, glo the global skills strategy gives you two weeks. It'll take two weeks to bring in top talent from around the world in uh, particular industries. So we know that bringing in great, great immigration from around the world is a big piece of it. But the flip side of it is making sure uh, that we're giving the right opportunities to Canadians. Uh, investing in research and innovation, uh, boosting post-secondary education, making sure there are more coding programs for elementary and high school kids, making sure that we're ensuring that Canadians see a path for them in the Technologi technological, the disrupted future we're part of. There's a lot of anxiety that people are feeling all around the world and it's coming out in all sorts of different ways, whether it's populism, whether it's nationalism, whether it's, whether it's uh, 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 Canada is making sure that there is room for everyone to succeed, everyone to feel like there's a path forward for them and their kids in technology. And that's why we can be investing in AI the way we are. We can be investing in tech the way we are 
and it's not a source of anxiety for Canadians because they're being brought along with it. And that's a key part of making sure that there is the talent that global companies need when they want to set up in Canada where we have an incredible diversity that allows you to plug back in right around the world. So you touched on global talent stream, and I would say that as a company, 50% of my leadership team, including myself, we are immigrant, first generation immigrants. And immigration pl plays a very important role when it comes to you know, growing the tech sector. Um, but at the same time, you know, speaking of global talent stream, it's a great program, but the categories of occupation is very limited. It's not as broad. And um, you know, when you're looking at LMIA and other programs, the, pro the, the, the process time, ease of entry, and the relevancy of the categorization is not there. Uh, I know that we've made a lot of progress and we had great success with uh, the programs. And I would love to know what are the steps that we we're taking to make sure the same acceleration and process time that we see with the global talent stream, we can see it across you know, uh, all the application programs that are out there. Well, the, the global talent, program is a small and targeted program for very specific industries. But on top of that, we also take in more immigrants per capita than just about any other Western country in the world. Uh, we take in about 350,000 immigrants a year, uh, knowing uh, that drawing in people from around the world who want to build their communities, uh, build a better life for themselves, build opportunities for their kids is a key way uh, to grow. Now, we're always looking at uh, ways of facilitating uh, growing our communities, growing our companies, growing our, our workforce. Uh, we're going to always make sure we're doing it in the right way, though. I mean, we need to make sure that we're drawing in people who are going to be able to contribute and grow, uh, and that at the same time, we keep one thing that's really, really precious and unfortunately a little bit rare right now uh, around the world. Canadians remain positive about immigration. As we see anxieties and worries and people closing in around the world, Canadians know that we get more resilient communities, we get better solutions, we get better innovation when we bring in people from all around the world. That's why uh, we are doing well at a time even of anxiety. Uh, we've seen the Canadian economy flourish over these past years. We've seen Canadians' confidence increase in their own future. We've seen the lowest unemployment in 40 years, as you've pointed out. We've added a million jobs to the economy. And the way we've done that is because We've made sure that there is a clear message, that there is room for everyone to succeed, and there are investments that make sure that everyone has a path to success. It's when you start seeing those digital divides of people excluded that we get into troubles as communities and as, uh, as societies. Um, I think looking at, speaking of... I agree, that's fantastic. I think speaking of talent, uh, from my experience, talent wants to live in clean, green, and affordable cities. And uh, when you're looking at the tech industry, is obviously one of the fastest growing uh, industries, and uh, the demographic within the companies are younger. And the millennial generation, you know, in Canada overall, would be representing 50% of the population by 2020. And I would love to know, what are your plans in terms of having the federal government play a more of an active role in making our cities more affordable for the younger tech workforce uh, across uh, the cities in Canada? Yeah, that's a, a great question. It reminds me of when I was just starting out as a politician. I went to visit Kitchener-Waterloo's Communitech, which is a great incubator, uh, a great place that is getting all sorts of startups. And I was talking to all the various tech companies what is it that a future federal government led by me could do to help you out? What is it that you really need from the federal government? I'm expecting you know, tax credits or research grants or, or immigration stuff, and yes, those came. But the number one thing they said, we need infrastructure. We need a fast train from Kitchener-Waterloo to Toronto. We need to make sure we're investing in connecting people with bricks and mortar so that uh, they can flourish in ecosystems that are creating, uh, creating the kind of solutions we need. So I said, okay. Um, one of the things we did when we took office but four years ago was put forward the largest infrastructure investment plan in Canada's history, about $180 billion over the next 10 years that involves uh, yeah, high, speed, uh, uh, high frequency rail, it involves things uh, like, uh, like public transit, investment in community infrastructure, green infrastructure, rebuilding and strengthening our cities and our communities right across the country. 
The flip side of that is you talk about affordable, and I've spoken with uh, John Torrey, the Mayor of Toronto, who is just here, uh, or is here today, um, a number of times. We see an issue where it's harder and harder for millennials to actually be able to buy their first homes. Uh, and they're delaying their entrance into sort of the home ownership equity building phase of their lives. And that's something that we tangibly wanted to turn around. So we created something called the First Time Home Buyers Incentive, which basically is a no fee, no interest mortgage that's going to reduce uh, people's first uh, home purchase mortgage payments. Uh, by hundreds of dollars a month. So there's tangible things we're doing to make cities more livable. On top of that, we've done things like Smart Cities Challenge to try and spur innovation, and we're investing in the kind of social innovation infrastructure, things like a Canada Child Benefit, things like increasing seniors' benefits, uh, Canada Workers' Benefit, Canada Training Benefits, the kinds of things that are going to allow people to actually feel like there is room for them to succeed in our communities, in our cities, while we're building a better future. We can't just race forward into the future for a few with the tech brilliance we have in this room and sort of shrug at everyone who's being left behind. You can't do that and be a, a solid, stable country or society. You need to bring people along, and that's the balancing act and the investments we're making on both sides of that to make sure that everyone can see themselves reflected in a stronger future. Thank you for that. Um, so we, we all know that funding is a key factor in uh, terms of building companies and you know scaling businesses. And you know, when I started my business, uh, the landscape was very different, and financing was definitely a challenge. And you know things have changed significantly since then. Uh, you look at 2018, we had 3.7 billion of VC uh, money that was uh, dispersed across Canadian companies, which is great and is a signal for maturity. But at the same time, when you're looking around, you know, in the tech sector at a billion plus or 10 billion plus market cap companies, we still have a long way to go and we need to build a much stronger and healthier ecosystem so we would actually have the next Amazon, Google and Microsoft built out of Canada. And at the same time, the federal government supports many other industries, you know, through grants, other in incentives, you know, tax deferrals, tax credits. Uh, knowing that our industry is growing faster, creating more jobs, um, how can we uh, have the federal government providing similar benefits and advantages uh, to the tech uh, community? Uh, the fact is, no government has ever invested as much in the tech sector, in innovation, in research, as this government over the past four years, because we know it is an essential path to the future. Uh, whether it's uh, having invested uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in, uh, in venture capital uh, you know, frameworks, whether it's making sure that we're investing in research and fundamental science, uh, in things like AI, uh, we did about $125 million direct for AI right across the country. Uh, we've created super clusters, which are hundreds of millions of dollars. We know that investing in universities, in research, in innovation, in training are the kinds of things that are going to give us the best returns in the future. So those are investments that we've made and we will continue to make because we have seen uh, a lot of actually, I mean, we've spent a lot of time trying to compete uh, with Silicon Valley or watching you know, Canadian innovators head down to the Bay Area to try and succeed. And what we've seen over the past few years is increasingly people are coming back for the quality of life, for the stability, for the access to global talent through our immigration, uh, through uh, the livable cities, through all the different things we're doing. Plus, a lot of people are bringing a lot of capital back with them uh, from Silicon Valley because people are realizing there are a lot of amazing opportunities to invest here in Canada. We have a number of big companies that have decided to return to Canada, to come to Canada. Thomson Reuters, a few years ago, moved its global headquarters from the United States back to Canada, uh, where it is flourishing because of the access to talent, because of the innovative ecosystems. We are really seeing that that this is one of those places where, where the, the mix of opportunity, of diversity, which I sort of glossed over earlier. I mean, we know that when you have different perspectives, different backgrounds, different stories coming together to work on the same problem, um, you get much better, more, more uh, robust and resilient solutions. So the fact that Canada is a country that has always embraced diversity, 
uh, and we know uh, that it is a source of strength, never a source of weakness, has given us a real advantage as uh, we look at that competitive investment uh, environment uh, that more and more people are looking at Canada for. Do you think we're doing as much as what we're doing with the other industries? Like, you know, knowing that again, you know, some of the staple industries like oil, gas, forestry, mining, you know, they do have access to more subsidies. What does it take for us to actually have the tech sector, you know, getting to a place that would have access to similar scale of benefits? Well, I think every sector is different and has, has a need for different things. We are failing at phasing out.